Welcome to Viewpoint. Tonight we return to the issue of housing problems. Pressure Group Action for Housing again takes us into the homes of people living in desperate conditions. People renting privately but crying out for government help. ¿Cómo se siente usted en esa casa? Ahora está bien, pero le falta ducha, hijo, y la cocina no tengo, tú sabes. En la noche viene la gente para molestarme. Ahora estoy mucho frío, yo no tengo ducha, tú sabes. Bueno, yo, soy, yo me llamo Mohamed Shargi. Vivo aquí de 1982, ya va cerca de 40 años. ¿no? Y lo que pasa es que la casa todavía no hace falta decirte cómo está. Yo no estoy contento aquí. Pero he hecho una aplicación para ver si puede el gobierno darme una caseta, que llevo ya 10 años esperando y todavía no me ha dado nada. ¿Cómo ve usted a su casa? No está bien. Como la jaula. Para cinco personas. Yo tengo 35 años aquí. Tenía muchos problemas para mí, para mi salud. Landlords believe that rent control legislation forms a big part of the problem, affecting homeowners, tenants and service providers equally. They've formed the Gibraltar Landlord Association and they say they're going to work with the government to modernise legislation. We are the bad landlords, we get served with notices, our rents get put down even further and we haven't got to say in anything. After last year's viewpoint on this topic, the government asked the environmental agency to visit many properties in the old town. What did they find? We've arranged to meet the housing minister and also the minister for public health here in Carrera's Passage. Since we, we last met about a year ago, we've been uh, visiting flats um, in, the, in the town area, mainly pre-war flats. And uh, it's been an, an, an eye-opener for, for us because we've seen how um, appalling most of these flats are and how uh, people live in places which are not fit for uh, human uh, habitation. So we agreed with government that uh, the uh, officials from the Department of the Environment would uh, accompany us and uh, we've uh, done an, an audit after we visited about uh, 98 uh, flats. I've got a list here. We, vis we visited and inspected 70 flats, visited and did not want inspection 21 and people not at home 7. So we visited a total of 98 flats number of um, abatement, uh, abatement orders were sent out and these were 15 um, involving 36 uh, environmental agency properties and um, apart from these six um, cases were referred to the housing department um, two overcrowding with uh, serious defects and one overcrowding only with mixing of sexes No, 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 yo no tengo baño, no tengo baño, nada, no tengo baño. Uh, toilet sí, pero la, el baño no, yo miro la palangala para duchando, hasta encima del mar. Y, y le eh, cerra la puerta, cerra todo y le caliente agua en el cafetera, la, uh, duchando con una palangala, tú sabes. La gente le dijo, vine para noche para molestar a mí, está durmiendo. Y dice, ¿qué era? ¿Qué era? Yo me asusta, hijo, me asusta. Y yo no tengo nadie aquí, sola. No tiene hermano, no tiene hermana, no tiene nada, yo sola. Y la noche, 35 años. Yo vine cuando la frontera, una semana y, y la frontera te abre. Antes, para pagar aquí, aquí, sí libra. ¿Y ahora cuánto paga usted? Ahora 50. Yo voy con mi supina. Con mi supina te ayudo. Sí, y ayuda a mi pobre vine.
Well, during the course of 2019, the Environmental Agency, uh, for which I am responsible from the public health aspects of, of this issue, have been meeting regularly. I think they've held 11 meetings with Action for Housing. They have inspected, I believe, if I can check my note, uh, many properties, 103 abatement notices were issued during the course of the year, uh, 22 of which resulted in legal proceedings, some of which are ongoing. The important thing there was that Action for Housing and the Environmental Agency should bring together both aspects so that we would have proper data and proper information and also tackle the areas where we thought this needed to be tackled. Um, we are obviously have a long way to go, but at least we, we have a full picture, I believe, or as full as possible, uh, and action is being taken both by landlords in some cases and where it hasn't been taken by landlords, these will be processed through the courts. From the public health angle, we're looking at things like dampness, uh, health and safety issues, uh, all sorts of things. There's a long list uh, of uh, aspects that have to be met. So they've been going and visiting these properties together uh, and uh, deciding which needed action and which perhaps didn't need so much action. Uh, and we have now got a database of all of these which we can refer to in the future. I never, I never imagined that the Moroccan people live in that way. So, well, it was a, a record, it was a message for uh, governments and for housing departments that we want them to know what's going on and we want them to know about it to make a decision, to make a, a difference, uh, a solution for that. Okay. Sí, ¿sabe? 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 Los otros, los árabes, dicen 20. 71. Sí, es, es, sí, es, sí. ¿Y cuánto, cuántos años llevan libertad? Y de la libertad, de, um, ¿cuánto abre la frontera con los panes? Y todavía es santo de, de gobierno. Y, y ¿sabe? yo vine joven aquí. recently become, uh, the, as from the last election, the housing minister. Um, tell us a little bit about how you view this, uh, this problem in the private sector. Well, as far as I'm concerned, as the minister for housing, I'm in charge of the government stock and everything to do with the government. We are not directly responsible for any private l landlord or private tenants. So therefore, it is not quite the remit of the housing minister. But having said that, of course, we, we are interested in what the ha is happening. But even further, what we are involved in is the Housing Act, which then ha will have a, sort of like a bearing on the private sector. Well, the last year what we have done, me and Mr. Pina, for me was the first time I was, I was shocked actually what I have say uh, how people of Gibraltar which is uh, Gibraltarian origin Moroccan living in that conditions for me was shocking shocking ese tierra de nosotros yo viví aquí mejor mejor cuando fui a Marruecos dos semanas para cinco meses yo lo bajé una dos semanas y vuelto he vuelto aquí antes estaba trabajando pero ahora 2011, ya salí, terminado el trabajo. Ya, ya está. ¿Dónde trabajaba? En Los Panos. Una compañía, mi, mi soy sola. Uh -huh. ¿Tiene usted pensión? Sí, gracias a Dios. Gracias a Dios. 
y todo 500 y 40 libras en el mes. Dule gracias a Dios, nosotros pagarlo, paga agua y paga la alquila y tú sabes la comida muy cara. Yo viuda, no está casada, no, no tiene cosas en, en, en el banco, yo no tengo. Ahora tiene cuenta el banco, pero no mucho, no mucho. No nada hoy, como la gente todo está. Entonces, ma, más o menos llega a final de mes bien, justo. Ah, no. A veces, a veces bien, a veces vosotros aguantando, ¿qué va a ser? ¿Qué va a ser? Vosotros aguantando. And it's clear from uh, speaking to officials and even the ministers that um, they, they didn't necessarily know how badly some people live. Well, actually, today I was so happy to say that the ministers come today, Minister for Public Health and the Minister for Housing, they came personally to see the conditions. I was glad that they came and I saw their faces, they was like shocked and they never expected to find that uh, horrible conditions, how a human being live. So what we have done is we have tried to portray, um, as we went along, what the realities of people who live in terrible, dismal, appalling uh, conditions. And uh, we must thank both the department for, for having cooperated with us. And also we want to thank uh, both the ministers, uh, Stephen Linares, the newly appointed uh, Minister for, for Housing, and uh, John Cortez, the Minister the Minister for the Environment for having taken such an interest in what we have done and uh, we are also pleased to see that they've come out behind the desks and uh, come with us to see how some of these people that we have uh, highlighted in our programme live and they've been I think quite shocked by the conditions in which some of these people live. So we are, we are pleased that they have come along uh, because I think that at the end of the day, um, as they say, you know, a vision or a, a seeing something is much more important than a thousand words. And I think that having come out um, uh, from their offices and come out with us and see what the conditions are, I think will, will, will help um, um, in the near future for things to well, improve. So now it's up to, up to them, up to the government to take action on what they have seen and deliver. A veces mi hijo trabaja en Marruecos, hoy la soldado, muy bueno. A veces le compraba las cosas, le manda con hombre con a mí como pan, o carne, o aceite de oliva, o algo, algo de comida. Aquí todo caro, todo caro, todo lleva. Voy a la tienda, 12 libras, no tengo nada, poquito, poquito, este un poco, este un poco, este un poco, y ya está. Alhamdulillah, gracias a Dios. ¿Cómo te puede ayudar el gobierno? Más. Para todo. El gobierno, yo lo vi de la, la, un cuarto, y cocina, y ducha, y hamdulla, gracias a Dios. ¿Qué queremos? ¿Ah? Hoy vinieron dos ministros para hablar con y ver su vivienda. ¿Qué te pareció? Muy bien, está contenta, gracias. Um, so a lot of these people are powerless, no? They don't have money to improve their situation? Actually, this, uh, the case that we saw today, the person uh, is very, very powerless because he's, he's not working at the moment. 
he have no income only for the the dole. They five uh, members and and. Uh, and a house, five members, with 400 pounds a month. So they have to pay the rent and ha they can't afford to pay the rent because they, the, the, the man, uh, he stopped working six months and the, the rent goes high. The, the kids, they one mental health ill and the other girl physically ill. These people really need uh, medical support and the housing support. It would be remiss of me not to put to you Action for Housing's um, view that the government is not moving quickly enough on this, evidenced by, uh, sadly, individuals who are stuck in uh, substandard accommodation and who spend their last years uh, in that uh, dwelling and, and pass away there. Well, and I, and I sympathise with that and I'm, I'm, I'm meeting them next week. Uh, I'm going to try and deal with those specific problems, people in the who are acutely uh, or living in a bad state, how we can remedy those. We've also got to look at the private landlords and see what they can do, how they can contribute as well. So it's got to be a teamwork here. And we do, obviously we do not want anybody to live in the standards that they are living. I mean, it's, it's not right. And I am the first one to admit that. But they are living, after all, in a private accommodation so we need to again it's a, a thin balance on how we deal with it as a minister I can't deal with it but I have to and again I'm having a meeting with the landlords uh, association and I'm meeting with them to see what we can do to better the situations of the people living in those states I think that uh, they have seen what the conditions are um, on, on site and I think that they've been impressed and hopefully, hopefully this will uh, motivate them and the government to take more immediate and drastic action to alleviate the plight of people who live in these horrible conditions. I think it's fair to say as well that um, a, a lot of the people whose houses we are seeing and, and, um, and talking about uh, are quite powerless um, in, in terms of uh, being able to afford something better or, or different and certainly uh, they're not going to be purchasing any property anytime soon. Oh, we understand that. They're, they're, probably, they're probably not, uh, you know, they haven't got the, the purchasing for power or whatever. We understand that there are many in the, in the, the public sector that are in the same situation. We've got to see what the situation is. The only thing is as well that sometimes what happens and the landlords complain is that we might, there are a few people living in, the, in, that, in a property, one is given a government house but then the property is not released because other people stay behind. So all these are issues that we need to discuss with landlords to see how best we can cope and do and put it better. Manda los papeles todos los años, dice tantos puntos, tanto esto, tanto el otro, pero todavía no, no ha llegado la hora de se toma una caseta. Yo soy un hombre ya mayor, jubilado, yo tengo 77 años. Mi mujer tiene 74. Ha hecho una operación para la perna también, me ha, me ha cambiado una, una vena por un tubo de placidez. Y mi señora también va a hacer una operación de, de la rodilla también, porque no puede ni andar. Y estamos operando hace ya 10 años y todos los años te manda un papel de punto eso y todavía aquí estamos operando todavía. Y ustedes están está mirando cómo está la casa. Por lo problema toda completa, ni, ni un sitio bueno para dormir, ni un sitio bueno para duchar, ni un sitio bueno para el servicio. Y usted está mirando, está mirando todo. No hace falta. La casa no está en condiciones para vivir personas, pero vamos. Mientras que no tengo otra cosa, yo gano muy poco cosa, muy poco dinero del de jubilado, no puedo podido conseguir una casa del que le más cara que esa y aquí estoy aguantando. ¿Y usted, usted eh, vive aquí desde hace 38 años ya? Yo en el, en el patio ese, en la casa esa de 1982, ya va por un 39, 38, por ahí, aquí en la casa esa. ¿En esta casa? En esta casa. Y... En Gibraltar vivo 54 años. 
<ríe> yo soy más llanito. <ríe> yo conozco a ese hombre chiquitito. <ríe> sí. Entonces, claro, ¿usted se, se considera primero llanito o primero marroquí? Bueno, yo soy dos. Yo no puedo ni, ni aquí ni ahí. Pero yo aprecio esto más porque yo he vivido más vida aquí que en Marruecos, por ejemplo, yo no puedo vivir así de esa condición, de tercer mundo como le llaman ustedes. <risa> Hay peor cosa, pero hacer una, una, cara, una casa del que le pagando un dinero y viviendo de esa condición, no creo que hay. Well, I, I think that, that the condition that, that we know that some people are, are living in is not acceptable. Uh, this is a problem which has been decades in the making, uh, but you've got to start somewhere and we have to deal with it. I think it's complete, completely vital that, that people should live in dignified and safe surroundings. Uh, and I will do everything in my power from my area to ensure that this happens. I think that pressure has to be put as we're doing on landlords to, to have the properties up to, to scratch. But there are other wider issues which are also being dealt with by other government departments. Um, but I'm absolutely convinced that this has to be dealt with and dealt with uh, firmly and as quickly as possible. In eight years, the GSLP Liberals have not built any housing for rental, which is what Action for Housing think is most needed. Well, what we are doing is we're going to, as you know, we've embarked on three major estates that we are building, and we are building for sales, that's clear. But on the back of that, there are still many, when the, for example, Hassan Centenary Terraces is, is built, we will then assess the amount of housing that we get back. And that would obviously open many doors, as in people who will come into the housing stock. But as we have committed, that if we need more, we will build more. But we need to do that assessment once these estates are built. We are also building pensioner flats, and it's very, very important this, because pensioner flats releases a lot of the uh, rental um, stock. Pensioners that are living in four RKBs, five RKBs would do very well and they are asking us to put them into pensioner flats. So that again releases a lot of the housing stock. So what I'm saying is that yes, we are committed to build uh, rental accommodation, but at the moment we need to assess the, our rental stock now in relation to the sales of the new estates. We, we don't agree with that. I think that uh, people who live in these conditions now need immediate, and I say immediate, uh, recourse to this dignified uh, housing accommodation and that we cannot wait, or they cannot wait another four or five years before the other ones, the, the so-called low-cost uh, housing are built and then take a decision as to whether they build housing for rental or not. Housing for rental is needed now, immediately. Uh, to accommodate people who are now in the 70s and who might not be alive in four, five, six years' time. So the, the problem must be resolved now and not in five or six years' time. Um, Zora, so, some feedback last time, last year, um, that some individuals they, they send a lot of their money back to Morocco and and then you know they, they could be spending more money here but they're choosing to send it back is, is that the case you think of course because you can't you can't live with paying a thousand pounds a month and at the same time you send money to your wife and to your kids it's impossible impossible to take two houses so some of the Moroccans uh, we're talking uh, uh, men he have to live and and one place small and very poorly that he can able to send money to his family. That's obvious, everyone will do that. But it doesn't mean um, he can live in bad condition that he can look after uh, his family. He as well can look after his family and at the same time here in Gibraltar they can have a, a affordable rent and good conditions house. He's not an animal 
and not because he have to look for his family, he have to live bad or in bad conditions. I'm totally disagree with that because I heard from uh, Gibraltarians in the street telling me, well, the Moroccan go uh, flat in Morocco, they got good house, good this and good that. Does it doesn't mean anything? It, uh, so, so if he have got good house in Morocco because and he have to live bad here, we have Gibraltarian, we have houses and uh, Santa Margarita and uh, you know what I mean uh, and uh, Soto Grande and they have house here as well. So what's the point? This is me off, sorry, my reaction, but this is the reality we live in. ¿Y usted tiene que mandar, tiene familia en Marruecos que oh, tiene que claro. mandar dinero? Pues oh, claro, tengo familia, tengo que mandar un poquito cuando pueda, porque ya me sé, está un poquito mayor, ¿sí? ya que tengo que buscar la vida, pero siempre necesita una ayuda, ¿sabes? Uh -huh. Y mientras que pueda, pues puedo ayudarle. Thank you.